Radio 2.0 Sunday night live stream. Thanks for joining us tonight. Happy Winter Fuel Day weekend. We're going to get started here in just a minute. Thanks for being here early, everyone. Prep is the fastest and most effective program to study for your ham radio license. Our complete multimedia course makes it easy to pass the ham radio license test, even if you're a beginner. Study at your own pace with 10 step-by-step -step lessons that are simple to understand and cover all of the official FCC questions. Take our course and you'll pass the exam on your first try or your money back, guaranteed. Begin your journey to becoming a licensed ham radio operator. And there it is. There it is. Let's see. I think my audio was a bit low before. Let's turn that up a bit. Let, let me know how that sounds in the chat. Thank you for joining tonight. Sunday night live stream. I have allergies tonight. I am not sick. I just have allergies. And I think it's from tearing down everything in camp today, including the big tent that we use, the gazebo, tearing the antennas down. It hadn't rained at the hunting lease in like two months, so everything's really dry out there. I got back and my I took a shower, got cleaned up uh, real nicely. My lips are chapped, my allergies. I've been sneezing, and uh, but it's it's all just it's all just kind of junk in my head. It's not uh, it's not the head cold I had over over New Year's. That's for sure. So appreciate everyone being here tonight. Winter Field Day was really fun this weekend. We're going to talk about that here in just a minute. Uh, thanks everybody for joining the chat. I did want to share a couple of things real quick. If I got Let's see. No, not that. That right there. And first of all, we're, we've talked about the fundraiser for um, the Lee family. That's pretty. That's going pretty well. Just refresh that. And it looks like we're up to eight, uh, $14,811. Uh, James Lee is doing better. I haven't actually watched any of the updates since like Thursday. Thursday is when I went out to the hunting lease to get set up for winter field day or to get camp set up, I should say. So, but they did, um, they did post some pictures of him, uh, sitting up, looking at the camera. <laughs> I think Michelle recorded a video of him saying ET phone home <laughs> with a big, uh, uh, IV in his nose and whatnot, a feeding tube in his nose. Uh, so that was in good spirits. I thought that was, that was, uh, done pretty well. So, uh, good thoughts and good prayers to him. Um, hopefully he's on the road to recovery and he continues, uh, doing well in that regard. We're also talking about uh, the the GoFundMe for uh, Susan Izzo, Don Izzo's wife, who recently passed away very unexpectedly. Uh, we announced that last week, and that's up to about thirty nine thousand dollars. Everybody's really stepped up. This was shared a bunch around their community and around their family, and they did a lot of um, promotion for it in in uh, that regard. But um, but that's going well as well. So Frank will share both of the, the links to both of those in the chat. If you're able to help out during the season, it would be appreciated. Even a small donation of ten or twenty dollars is fine. And uh, but we need we want to be able to ha help uh, those in need when we can. So the other thing is before I bring Frank on, this is my this these are my stats. I wonder if I can zoom in a little bit here. These are my stats for the live stream last week for the flex radio giveaway you can see concurrent viewers i had 1345 concurrent viewers that's the biggest live stream i've ever done in six and a half years being on youtube by far that is the biggest live stream the most um participation the most support i've had in a live stream it was a really fun time fun live stream and, uh, and I look forward to, I, I really appreciate everyone joining last week. So it's amazing what happens when you give away a $3,000 radio, <laughs> which I wish I could do that every month, but I can't. 
I can't do that every month, but what I did was I emailed some of my sponsors and some of my vendor contacts and, and uh, retailer contacts, and I said, look, this went really well last week, and I'm thinking about trying to do something on a more regular basis for like a giveaway. So I think what I've come up, this is not, this is not set in stone yet. I think what I've come up with right now is to do a monthly giveaway. Now, it's not going to be a big flex $3,000 radio every time. It's going to be something different every time. Sometimes it'll be bigger stuff or smaller stuff or whatever. Um, so what that's going to look like has not completely taken form, taken form yet. Okay, so I'm still kind of putting all the details together. I know for a fact, because of emails I sent out after this stream, links to the stream, I know for a fact that I will be doing an antenna giveaway Next month, I think the third Wednesday of the month of February, I think is when I'm going to do that. There's a big mosquito flying around right here. That's what I'm looking at. Uh, so we're going to give away a DX Commander uh, Expedition. I think Expedition. Either, either Expedition or Classic. We're going to give away a DX Commander antenna. We're going to give away a, uh, a dual band Yagi antenna from Jetstream. And I'm working on two or three or one or two other antennas. So it's going to be an antenna night giveaway. And we're going to try to promote it that way and get people traffic to the DX Commander website and the other websites that that are able to um, donate or, you know, doesn't always have to be a donation. Sometimes a discount is fine, and I can I can go ahead and purchase that on the back end. That's what happened with the Flex Radio. But, uh, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to kick that off next February. More to come on that. Be sure to sign up on my email list for more information on that. And I will keep you guys posted as much as I can. Wow, that's a that's several people in there. So, all right, let's bring you guys in right there. And uh, hey, what's going on? Howdy, Go ahead. man. Go ahead, Frank. You want to. I know you want to. I do. I do. It's been exciting and fun. What's going on on Big Radio? K-G5HJ. And what a weekend, Jason. And I do concur. Yeah. For some reason today, I can't stop sneezing. But who oh else gosh, do we have on terrible. the air today? We have another Jason, the Jason number one. And we have Jeremy. What's going on, y'all? Well, I'll tell you, Frank. I thought I heard that. Uh, Not radio. much. Uh, I, know weekend, but I, I guess we can hear it one more time. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, right. Jeremy, it sounds your, like your connection might be a little bit lagging, but uh, but you look okay. So where are you? Are you at home? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. All right. Good. Good. Cool. So uh, <laughs> that's good. Lawnmower. Does the DX Commander give you a British accent when you transmit? Not that I'm aware of, but because uh, I haven't built mine yet, but I have transmitted on one quite a few times. So that's good. So winter field day. So how did uh, how, you? So the 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 four of us that you see on camera right now, we were all at my hunting lease this weekend, and uh, Kate MRD was there with us. Uh, Bob from R Finder was there. Uh, let's see who else was there. Jake, uh, nobody knows who Jake is, but Jake's one of the hunt, uh, the lease members. He actually made his first contact, his first HF contact. I was talking to him on the way home on the sim on uh, six dot five two simplex, and he's like, "You know what? That was fun. You're right. I guess I'm gonna have to get on the radio more." <laughs> so what? How yeah. long have we been drilling and feeding? And uh, where aren't you on your radio? Yeah, What's going yeah. on? Now it comes to fruition. Yeah. Yeah, now, now it comes to be all the way honest, around. Um, field day is a good thing to get people hooked in HF. Yes, it, it that was my hook into HF also because I'm just driving around. Well, what what's this other stuff, man? I just can you know talk on the radio in my car, but man, field day and Poda has really gotten me the HF bug. Yes, well, and that, that's kind of the point. The field days, uh, you know, a lot of times field day stations will have what's called go to stations, get on the air where people who walk up that don't even know what ham radio is, they can sit down and, and get on the air and kind of see what it's like. Um, I'm not sure if that's so big at winter field day, but at normal field day, that's a thing. Uh, the club that we, we usually, uh, we usually run with, or we used to run with, they do that a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, yeah. Um, oh, there's Jake in the chat right there. So. Yeah. Uh, he's already <laughs> given me uh, a little bit of, a little bit of, Fun, fun. A l little bit of fun. Okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah. He's oh like, yeah. Take, like, you don't tank have radio. to bring tank on. No, I don't have to bring tank on. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Roger, uh, uh, Roger, Charlie says field day got me into ham radio. So that's cool. 
Yeah. Uh, but yeah, 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 that's one of the uh, that's one of the ways. That's one of the first things I did after getting my general upgrade was field day with the Hearst Club, mm-hmm. and uh, it was kind of all downhill from there. Uh, it was a really fun event, and um, and it was cool to do. So Frank, you have some stats for us. You want to share that? Yes. Let's okay. jump right on into it. Um, where is the big numbers? All total, um, software-wise, we had, without ancillary bonuses added up, the raw contact was 621. With the three multiplier that we had for our station, it was 2,448. This is just raw stats that um, are logging software prints. Um, mm. That was five contacts on 80. 40 had 248, 20, which was our working band, 324, and 15 with eight contacts. Um, I was I was I was very surprised that 15 meters was so quiet. Mm-hmm. I really thought we would see some more activity on 15 meters, and it's just because I've been seeing a lot of spots on 15 meters. My ham alert's been going off 15 meters. People doing POTA at 15 meters. A lot of 15 meters FT8. I'm just like, oh man, 15 meters should be really lit up for field day, but it just wasn't. We heard very little activity on. Fi- I think we made we made it. How many did you say we made? Five. Um, five on uh, or eight, 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 on eight, fifteen, five eight on, on 15. eighty. Yeah. What um, what was y'all's experience? What what'd y'all uh, think of the bands this year? Where where did which bands did y'all work? I, st- I I spent most of my time on twenty. Yeah, um, I think I, I had t- the best luck on 22. Um, mm-hmm. 15, I mean, it was come and go, right, on 15? Yeah. I feel like, you know, every now and then was good and it wasn't, but uh, I know we've had some really good luck during winter field day, both, uh, well, winter field day and summer field day on 15 meter in the past. But yeah, you're right, it just wasn't that great this time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, and that just kind of, that kind of surprised me. But we had a 10 meter station set up, which was our, we were running as five Oscars. So we had a 10 meter a 15 meter, a 20 meter, and we had two stations that were kind of hopping between 20 and 80, or I'm sorry, 40 and 80 meters. Realistically, we only really ran, I guess, four stations. Oh, uh, right at the, the beginning, the, we we were on all five. All five antennas were operating. I was sitting we did, down at the Well, 10. yes, yeah. We did call CQ a bunch on 10, but we weren't able to raise anybody on 10. And so. I was scrolling and scrolling and throwing through the uh, bands, and I heard no one. It was only static and um, peaks and valleys in, in that couple of places. Yeah. Um, Jeremy, man, what did you think of the bands uh, when you operated? I don't think Jeremy did much operating. I think he was well, just hanging out. <laughs> I didn't do much operating. I didn't yeah. do much operating, but I know like um, 40 and I know y'all on 20 were getting a lot of contacts, mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. with Mike next to listening to him next to him was getting a bunch. Hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we did re- we did really good on f- uh, forty after you know in the afternoon and evening on Saturday and uh, and I I turned on forty early this morning at like seven a.m. and I was kind of surprised that I didn't hear more during that time. But we we found a very big noise problem, a very big RFI problem. We're out in the field in the middle of nowhere, but we've got solar panels and batteries. We got generators running. And we got RV trailers. Uh, we had three RV trailers this time. And we found this big noise problem. It's just the noise, the bands were just incredibly noisy on 20 and 40 mainly. And, uh, and I got to figure out where that's coming from. Cause I was telling, um, I was talking to Frank and Jake on the drive home on Simplex that I took my FTDX 10 with my PAC 10 infit half wave out there and said, it was the first time I set up my, um, my gazelle gazebo It's the video that I did on the gazelle gazebo was that weekend. And, uh, and I set that up, and I hunted Poda during the day between evening morning hunts and evening hunts. It's usually too hot. Opening weekend in Texas is usually too hot to hunt during the day. Um, they don't usually move around when it's that hot outside. But um, but I, I set up a radio with an infed halfway pack tenna, and I just hunted Poda for like an hour that afternoon. And I didn't have any noise. Everything was nice and quiet. I was able to get pretty much every station. I checked into a uh, uh, Bud um, Drummond, who runs the, he runs a net on seventeen meters. He's he's the the guy who actually started Buddy Pole. Um, 
he uh, he runs a net on 17 meters, I think at 11 a.m. every morning. And I checked in with him, and he's like, "Hey, man, uh, sounded great from North Texas," and that was really fun to do. And uh, and I just don't remember having any noise. So something about field day with I guess with all the extra solar panels and generators and blah blah blah. Of course, we have generators running out there during deer season too. Uh, we just have a lot of noise, so I, I think sometime between now and next year, I'm gonna my my task is to track down where all that freaking noise is coming from and well, try to get it eliminated. We had that same somehow. noise, I think, on 80, but it was to the extreme. We were yeah. watching Mike's waterfall on 80 um, the first night, and it just looked angry. There was um, just noise everywhere, and when we were trying to troubleshoot it, we turned off all the generators. We turned I don't off. Remember- um, we, we I don't remember turning the them all off, did we? Yeah, we yeah, got okay. them all. We did. The one thing that we didn't turn off, though, and I noticed today when we were packing up, is that solar uh, charger on that new trailer, it, it, it buzzes. It's a little loud, so it could be uh, putting out some noise. And and I think that trailer was probably the one that was closest to the DX Commander, too, so that would kind of explain some of that noise on, on the station that Mike was working. You might want to check that, on maybe your, that um, when you go back in. Yeah, maybe that was true. Kyle says we need to ground the generators. How do you ground yeah, a generator? They have ground. They have grounding posts on them. You could just, you could just take a temporary like um, two foot grounding rod and tap it in the ground next to it and run a wire to it. Run a hmm. either a, a wire or like a like a mesh uh, mesh cable to it. Um, Interesting. It's not that hard to do. However, we're always running generators during deer season, and that opening weekend of deer season was before that third trailer was there. So that third trailer mm-hmm. wasn't there then. And we're up, but we're always running generators, and I don't think that uh, I don't I don't think we had any problems when I was kind of just tinkering around. Now that that electric smoker we used that did produce some RFI. When we shut off the electric smoker, I noticed a lot of noise go down. But that wasn't the only thing doing it because that no, wasn't running no. the whole time. No, it was so, not, and it was nowhere close to any of those antennas. Right, right. Yeah. Well, it was it was sort of close to the buddy to the buddy hex. I mean, it was closer to the Buddy Hex than uh, than the third trailer was, and I was seeing all kinds of noise on twenty meters running uh, the FTDX ten with the Buddy Hex. But when field day opened, so, that electric smoker was not running. No, no, that's true. It was not. That's true. Yeah, it ran most of the day on Friday, but only Saturday evening, I guess it was. So, um, so Ron says it was super noisy on all bands yesterday. Today is fine on all bands. <laughs> Of course it is. Go figure. <laughs> or it yeah. could be just the contest noise. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. the QRM, yeah. everyone's bleeding over everyone. Right. right. Yeah. So uh, those of you in the chat, let me let me acknowledge the super chat real quick. I missed one. Sorry about that. David Elkins. Uh, Jason, I hope you're ready for winter weather. Don't send it down here to Houston. No doubt. Boy, that's true. Yeah. Um, it's supposed to be like seven degrees by Thursday up here in North Texas. So... Needless to say, I brought the generator home. I've already got a full five-gallon ca- uh, can of gas. <laughs> I've got I've got a bunch of solar stuff as well, so we should be we should be fine. But so, uh, Jeremy, man, this was your first field day with us. Uh, wh- what did you think of our whole experience, man? Being out there off the grid and just hanging out. It was fun. I mean, we all. I remember going out there when you weren't there, but. Uh, this was with you there. It was kind of <laughs> comfortable because you were always going tank radio. <laughs> what what field day? I wasn't there at your lease. Well, no, I thought Jeremy, I was... Jeremy, were Jeremy? You've been there once before. Was that at a field day or winter field day? I can't remember. It was a, it was at a winter field day. It was a winter field day. Okay. Yeah, with uh, I want to say no, you, Jake, and then. Mm-hmm guys from crockett hmm. down there okay yeah they've been there they've been there several times also but i'm surprised that frank wasn't there yeah i think there um, was yeah. one i missed for some family reason you might have had a family thing yeah, that's that's yeah. yeah that may be true okay but but you said and i just want to point out your key point there i made the experience much more fun and enjoyable <laughs> Yes, uh, well, you certainly made it an experience. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was an experience for sure. <laughs> oh, that's true. Ah. <laughs> well, that's good to know. But uh, um, I so- do. 
I do have a map to share here real fast. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering if that's what you were going to share a minute ago, but go ahead. Yes, um, we've got so many windows open. Um, here is the map. I lost all y'all. Um, of the states that we contacted, we did not get Montana. Um, what is below Montana? I'm forgetting that. Nevada? Vermont? No, we got Nevada. And we got Utah. We got, I know we got Colorado, but anyways, then we got a couple other uh, places in Canada. We missed, have we ever got Hawaii? I've worked Hawaii before on field day. Yes. Oh man. Yep. We didn't get mm -hmm. it this year. And I assume that is um, Puerto Rico down at the yeah. bottom left. I contacted Puerto Rico this morning as one of the first contacts I made on 20 meters this morning. Ooh, so that was nice, fun. Very nice. Yep. Um, and let me, can, can I just bounce to another share? No, I got to stop yeah. and share again. Stop it. Yeah. Um, while we were out there, this is all the meat and food I picked up. <laughs> we had three racks of ribs, a brisket, um, some salsa for the morning, um, morning um, breakfasts. Um, uh, Nebraska. Yeah, it was Nebraska. Every, every, and everybody, cheese. No, everybody said Wyoming. And Wyoming, Wyoming was the yes. state. We contacted yeah. Nebraska. Everybody said Wyoming. Yeah. And so I left this big hunk and bag of cheese. Would have been perfect for the morning burritos that we were cooking. Just perfect. Mm. Um then stop mm. and start. Um one thing I where's Mike? I don't know. He's yeah. probably wiped. <laughs> we are kind of are, man. Uh, yeah. Mike was out there with his m, &M cables, and uh -huh. uh, he taught us all how to put cable lens on them and uh, soldering them. It was super easy. Even I can do it. Um, there will be a video on my channel about that coming up here soon. And um, it was super easy, and we did a lot of soldering. And my final picture for tonight, stop, share, is the camp mascot was up and running around of course i had to snap a photo with electra <laughs> get her That's to look good. that way man it took yeah. a little bit electra electra over here no don't look no no we don't have food electra <laughs> over here That's but good on That's this good. one i, like I had that. the cigar so i had to hold it out way out mm -hmm. but as soon as i uh, finished that she ran away <laughs> yeah you yeah got a cigar i'm gone mm. that's that's all the photos i had to share yeah. um but it was a blast I, I noticed that we got we we uh we we contacted oklahoma usually oklahoma and kansas are the two that are the hardest to get from our location uh going east and west is fairly simple mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. going straight north oklahoma kansas nebraska north and south dakota is usually kind of kind of challenging so it looks like we were missing nebraska also mm -hmm. that's the, that's the one there's oklahoma right there and there's uh kansas above that and then nebraska and then wyoming's the one to the to the west but uh yeah i, I i'm not surprised we didn't get nebraska but oklahoma that's we we typically don't hear those guys much mm -hmm. but um <laughs> i think that's i good. registered a couple of contacts in oklahoma did you? Okay. Yeah. Well, good. Good. What um, band? Do you remember what band it was? I mostly my. I just did twenty. I tried okay. a couple of the others, and I just cannot get a good, um, good, good place to call CQ on. If if we would have been able to get more contacts on eighty, that would have been a, a better band for mm -hmm. closer, closer stations. But all right. Yeah. So the big question is, who made the most contacts? I think it was Mike. Was it Mike or Shane? Which one prevailed? Both oh, I know. Both were working no. pretty hard. It was Mike. Yeah, I, th I think Mike had the extra day on Shane, so I think he mm. redeemed himself. <laughs> well, well, no, not really, because Mike didn't contact anybody this morning. Oh, no, he didn't. didn't. Um, no, uh -uh. I ran a big pile up when we first started, and then I relinquished it, and I just kind of let everyone else have it. And I, I, I worked a little bit on 40 last night, but I didn't spend much time on the radio. But then I, I sat down this morning and worked another big pile up this morning, so... But I think I think Mike worked a really just for two or three hours. I think he was working pileups last night on forty. Yeah. So yeah, he um, did really I, well at night. I got up and got on uh, your station for twenty, and I kept running and running and running until uh, my um, surface battery uh, decided to go. Um, 
But even when I left, man, it was still a, it was a still a good, a little little pileup, but it was still going on. Um, to answer the question, it was Mike with 165 contacts. Uh, he did 27% of the contacts for our group, um, followed by Jason with 137. Um, then uh, this was Shane, five or K5QBF. Mm-hmm. That one's a mouthful just like mine. He had 113. <laughs> um, I was next with 85. Uh, squeaked just past Bob, who had 82. We haven't talked about much about Bob this go around. And yeah, have, um, no. bringing up the rear, um, W9XDM. You didn't play a lot of radio, man. I thought you'd be on there more. It's DXM. Tank, I know you're reading things yeah. backwards again, but it's okay. I'll let it slide. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you know what? Uh, I, I called on 80 and 10 for, for quite a bit. So I was trying to pull those couple of bands that we just going to get much out. And then uh, after that, the cooler opened up, and I don't know where I went from there. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Quite, quite a bit of um, um, fun alcohol and liquor was consumed. But Bob was out there. Um, he he did uh, do some good work with eighty two contacts. Um, he every time he heard someone call, is this band clear? He's like, it's field day. Just start calling CQ. <laughs> like Bob, you can't yeah. do that. We want to promote good amateur radio stewardness. He's he's, he's from Let's New York. They just CQ. they're just they're just used to steamrolling over people in New York. So yeah, <laughs> Bob's actually quite a good. Bob's a, actually a very good HF operator. Oh, he, so he's excellent. He's yeah, he's act, he actually he's pretty good behind the microphone. Somebody asked um how many contacts on CW? That's the wrong thing. How many contacts on CW? Zero. So Z- NAYO was our NAYO was our CW guy. And uh and he didn't make it. He had some flight changes that prevented him from from flying down from uh uh Michigan. But uh yeah, it's um we didn't have anything. Everything everything we did was single sideband. Um mm-hmm. And it was, um, and it was fun. I like single sideband. Yes, I, I want to learn CW. Uh, Josh Ham Radio Crash Course. He's in the chat. Welcome, Josh. He did a really good uh, video. I think it was last weekend on uh, how to get in learning CW Long Island CW Club. What they offer and that kind of thing. There's been some really good uh, videos done by Kyle A A Zero Z and by uh, Red Summit RF Charlie about getting. Uh, started with CW and learning CW online and that kind of thing. Sterling did a series of videos for a while, like a year and a half ago. So a lot of good resources out there to learn CW. And, uh, one of my goals for this year is to, is to learn that. Uh, I went through the CW Academy for two months, their, their beginner course, which is two months long. It was twice a week for eight weeks. And I did that in 2019 and I, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I had a good time with it. I got to where I could send pretty well, but I couldn't copy worth a darn. And then I just haven't spent any time on it since then. So one of my goals for 2022 is to sit down and, and sign up for one of these, uh, either CW Academy again or Long, Long Island CW or one of them, and uh, spend some time on learning CW a little bit better. So that's what I that's what I want to do. Uh, Shane was not able to join us, but um, he's still in the chat. Um, he says, uh, Jason won the Dotto. See, he's getting into our lingo around camp. Right, right. Got Alaska for us. And uh, we did have one contact in Alaska because we this software does break it down to countries. Uh, 21 contacts to Alaska. I'm sorry, Canada. Um, and then one contact to Mexico and one contact to Puerto Rico. So that is Puerto Rico that was down in the corner. So they got a lot of DX out there. <laughs> sorry. Well, there just. it is. There it is. Yeah. It sneezes. <laughs> Sneezes I'm going trying, wild. I'm trying. Yeah. But um <laughs> hey, hey, Paul Mitchell, the guy who's got the name of a shampoo. Uh, you don't learn CW by talking about CW. And he's quite correct, but what a blunt way to say it. <laughs> so uh, yes, very true, Paul. Very true. <laughs> uh, there's Charlie. So maybe by uh maybe by our 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 um grand canyon trip in in july charlie I, i'll i'll know enough to squeak by but <laughs> um we'll see we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens with that but uh but yeah it was a fun trip so we're talking about next we're going to be back we okay well two things i want to address number one 
Several of you sent me private messages. Some of you I know, some of you I don't know. So I got several private messages from people asking if you could join us this year. And quite frankly, the reason I didn't reply to some of you or I said that I, you know we couldn't do it this time is because we just flat did not have enough beds. We did not have enough sleeping quarters to house everyone. Now and, and Frank, the, the food. We had ten ten um heads out there this year and we pretty much ate all the meat that we that's had. True. We had yeah. some stuff left over for breakfast, but the main big horses were gone. And yes. not, not to pat myself too much on the back. The ribs turned out to be very, very good. And um, I got uh, Jake's help on that. Um, I was kind of burnt after cooking the brisket the uh, pr previous day, and he he manned the smoker for me. Um, he he really um, took over the ball on that, but they came out amazing. And that brisket came out pretty well, even though I burnt it a little on the bottom, um, overcooked it. But, hey, man, that was my only was second good. brisket I ever cooked. I thought it was good myself. Ever cooked. Yeah. Yeah, so. I thought it was good. Yeah, and Jason said something as we were leaving. He's like, let's not put as much emphasis into food next time. And I think we should do a brisket or ribs, but not both. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, because, I, yeah, I know you don't want to be cooking all day. And and that's cool. And Bob likes to cook, um, but he wasn't there early enough this time to cook. So we'll, we'll have to work something out. But um, but the But the no beds thing was real. And, you know, the food thing is easily overcome. We can we can buy food easier than we can magically make beds appear or, or rent another RV trailer. So um, so next time when we're having people out and um, some new folks want to come out, uh, I'll probably have to pick and choose some of you who might own your own RV trailer, and then uh, and then maybe we'll have a spot. We've got 175 acres. We've got plenty of room. We just don't have enough beds, and that's a real thing. Now, having said that, the we were all talking this morning before we left, maybe it was last night, about possibly, instead of going back to Montague County, which is where we were this time and where we've been the last two years, we're talking about maybe going down to Galveston and doing a winter field day at Galveston in January of 2023. Um, so we could, we could kind of make it almost like a week-long event. and Not everybody can come down for the whole time, and that's fine, but those of you who can... We can come down and do POTA for a couple days before Winter Field Day starts because the Galveston Island State Park is literally about an eight-minute drive from my house down there. And then we can come back to the house and set up antennas at the house and do Field Day from the house. We could do Field Day from the state park. In fact, one of the first contacts I worked on on Saturday was some guy calling CQ Winter Field Day. And the, the contact he made before me, he was saying, oh, yeah, also I'm in the state park. So you're going to get credit for that, too. And then I contacted him, and I said, hey, man, thanks for activating the park. This, that's really cool. So you can work Winter Field Day from a park and get double credit. Now, the only problem with that is that if we go down there into the park, we're going to have to either rent an RV spot or a campsite or something like that overnight so we can keep our antennas set up overnight, or we're going to have to tear everything down on Saturday, drive back to my house, sleep, go back on Sunday, reset up, and operate Sunday, or just maybe just just operate Saturday and forget about Sunday. Um, so there's a couple of choices there, but uh, quite frankly, I think I'd rather just go walk down on the beach from the house and operate there for winter field day and not even worry about the park. But we've got plenty of time to to talk. Or just about throw that, up but... the antennas and operate inside the house. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's 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 a thing there too. Uh, one or two people said in the chat, man, that they'll bring their own tent and bed. But um, <laughs> I see Jason already laughing next to Jason. How did that work out last year for you right. to send up your own tent in Texas? Phenomenal. <clears throat> it was cold. I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> it was cold. Yeah. Yeah, it was freezing last year. I think yeah, it, was it was colder last year. I don't know. We got down into the 20s this week. I um, think it was colder. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, think it was colder, colder this, this year. Yeah. yeah. I do too. Yeah, because it was like 26 when we woke up yesterday morning. Now this morning I woke up; it was 38. It was much warmer today than it was oh, yeah. yesterday. Yeah, it was but nice uh, yeah, um, but that's 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 the thing. So we'll uh, we'll talk about doing though. Uh, I think uh, it got 
down to 28. 28, um, I think, was the lowest I saw, uh, mm-hmm. Charlie. Yeah, it was, um, and that was in the morning on Friday and Saturday. I think it was about 27 or 28. But as soon as the com- sun came up, I mean, it 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 rose up pretty quickly. It was yeah. like 55 or 60 today by the time we left the, by the time we, we tore down and left to come home. So uh, here, here comes all the northerners. I'm waiting for it. Oh, it's negative 30, 45 auto says. Um, and he says he has a negative 30 sleeping bag. Oh, um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Digital Dreamer. Hell, I'll rent an RV because driving over the Pacific Ocean takes too much gas. He's in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> good luck with that, buddy. Good, uh, good, uh, good, good luck with that. So. <laughs> but it's good uh it's good it's good fun so yeah we're talking about we're talking about going back to uh to the same spot for field day which it'll be really hot but oh well and then uh and then possibly doing galveston for winter field day of next year but we got plenty of time to decide all that so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we'll see uh we'll see what happens with all that but that's that's cool but it was a good uh, it was a fun event we had uh we had uh the buddy hex hex beam set up um, and I got a triplexer from DX Engineering, which you'll see a video on soon. And I was running three radios through the triplexer on the buddy hex for 10 meters, 15 meters, and 20 meters. So that was an easy, I mean, it was one antenna setup and three radios, three bands. Now, again, we didn't really get anything on 10 meters, and 15 meters was much wider than I thought. So effectively, the 20 meter station was was really the only one it benefited us benefited us on but mm-hmm. it is uh it was it was nice to have it there in case it was it ever opened up which it never did but that's okay man it that that kind of bummed me out how um if a couple of these bands were open because i was really looking forward to just sitting down and hammering out a lot of contacts that night and um the uh, the couple i think it was you and mike had um the bands that were kind of opened at that time but the other three the um 10 and 15 this did not pan out majorly yeah Yeah. and we were all excited for 15 because 15 was supposedly been up since the last um last uh, year or so everyone's saying 15 has been amazing well yeah at least for the last few months it has been i don't know about the last year but for the last few months it's definitely been much more alive than it has in recent times so Kevin's asking, can you do a review of the Buddy Hex? Uh, define review, because I did last um, the last two or three field days and winter field days. I've done QSOs with the Buddy Hex and talked about it and shown it in operation. Uh, last field day, I did a video about building the Buddy Hex and showing all the parts of it and how it went together and everything. So when you say review, that's pretty much already been done on the channel. And uh, I've got several videos about it, so go check my channel and see. And if there's and then if there's something specific you want to see, let me know, and um, I'll be happy to look at that for you. So Kyle says that 15 meters was hot for him to the west coast and then to Hawaii and Alaska. Hmm. So maybe we did uh, point the hex in the right directions. Oh, uh, we had it pointed west at one point in time. Uh, Is your late mic on- just say we didn't ham hard enough? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, he didn't ham on 15 meters at all, so that's okay. He can say what he wants to. So, good. So, okay. Yeah, but it's supposed to, yeah, everybody's talking about the, or I saw, I saw somebody say something about uh, the winter storm of last February, and I'm like, well, we'll see what happens this February, I guess. You yeah. gotta, y- y'all, y'all gotta realize, I've lived in Texas my whole life, and that's like the only time I've ever seen that happen. So same of, here, same of, of here. The last three or four decades, that's happened one time. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, same here uh, too. On it, it yeah, we, um, we've gotten snow before, and we we you know we got oh, yeah. occasional blackouts because you know power lines go down, but nothing yeah. to that extent. Right, right, correct. Yeah, but winter field day was fun. Uh, we we uh we don't usually get on there and try to uh be the top ranking club to make contacts we just get out there to have fun and we had a lot of fun uh right up until these uh right up until these allergies started anyway 
and uh, it was uh, it was a good time to just get out and play radio and uh, see what we could do with all the different equipment. But uh, it was definitely a good uh, a good thing to uh, to experience. And I'm glad we went. I'm glad I'm glad it's over. I'm just tired. <laughs> I'm not glad it's over. I'm just I'm just glad to be home because I'm tired and I really well, want to have a shower. <laughs> Phil, talk about that shower, man. I took a <laughs> long 30 minute shower. I swear I, if I looked down, that dirt was just pulling. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> but the all the time, man, it's like it seems like we, we set up and get ready and get ready and then it starts and it's over in a day. Man, it it probably needs to kick off and that friday night i know so we have a solid you know like 48 hours maybe well that's what's that's what's fun about doing like a poda camping trip we can go out and do like a three or four night poda camping trip Mm -hmm. and operate poda during the day during the morning at in the evening for late shift we can just keep it going and and it, it that'd be really fun to do i think so that and frank and i have talked about doing some of that so we'll probably do that at some point upcoming but uh that might be fun and especially, you know, we, we, we kind of tease this idea. If we do go to a, like an open grasslands, we can um, announce it and maybe have right. um, more people showing up. Right, right. Yes, I would, uh, I would like to see that as well. So, oh, well, what Russian else? Russian so bots ha- are coming back again. Yeah, I saw, yeah, this, uh, you guys are doing a fantastic job of killing those Russian bots out there. KO4 AFL, thank you, Noel, thanks. <laughs> so you want to go around the room and see who left what up there or in your trailer? My big jacket's in your trailer. Your big jacket's in the trailer? So have you guys figured out anything that you left yet? <laughs> you know, I didn't know. I don't think I left anything this time, but I... I didn't know that I left an antenna in Jake's trailer oh, right. from last field day until this field day. So I'll find out in the summer when I left the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Oh yeah. That's funny. You're like, I guess I left this out here last time. Cause that was your antenna sitting in this trailer. <laughs> didn't miss it much. Apparently Jake, yeah. you got everything. I'm sorry, Jeremy, Jeremy. Yeah, I got everything, but not, I'm kind of surprised that uh, Jake got on the radio and made his first contact as on the HF, but I never lost anything. I made sure that I checked, checked it all the time, checked everything, even checking, making sure that Jason got everything. Yeah. I usually do that, but I did not do my walkthrough like I usually do in hotels or trailers or when I leave your trailer, I mean, and um, I just, I just thought I was being good this time and got everything. But as soon as I um, jumped in the car and down the road, it hit me. I was like, I didn't get my heavy jacket, and I hope mm-hmm. I'm not going to need it this coming week. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good chance you will. Are you be able to work from home, Frank? If I mean, if it's really bad on Thursday, like they're saying, it might be. Yeah, we'll okay. work from home pretty All easily. Right. Well, then we're gonna have to get on. We're gonna have to uh, get on the repeaters and see who we can keep in touch with you know if we lose power again i got a hf radio and all that um noise floor around me will just drop oh, away yes if all, yeah if the whole grid goes down in your neighborhood you're like oh hf yes yeah. let's do that <laughs> oh boy this ought to be fun oh but, uh, oh how 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 did he get in here i'm surprised he even has a camera honestly but well everyone has a phone these days well, that's true also. There it is. <laughs> the manly beard. Yeah. Jake. The infamous Jake. From yeah. State Farm. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to jump in and say hi. Uh, hey, man. What's up, man? What are your thoughts on Field Day? You, you attended several of them already, but um, this was the first time you got on the radio. I, I had yeah. a little bit to drink that day. <laughs> so that's why you got on the radio the alcohol that is why uh-huh. i got on the radio there's uh-huh. never a shortage of alcohol and you never have it partaken but this time peer pressure got to you right yeah i, I don't know what it was i just uh felt like sitting down and and calling back to the guy but you enjoyed it right oh it's fun it's a blast okay. like always okay well, I want to say thank you for helping me out on the ribs, man. You did an excellent job tending to the smoker after I prepped them and got them all ready. But um, you, you, you did the heavy lifting for me, so that that was awesome, man. Mm-hmm. Hey, my pleasure. 
Yeah, that's good. Frank, do you have a picture of the of the flamethrower? No. Oh god. I, I took got... some video of it. I was hoping Mike was going to use it. We had a Christmas tree. I think Noel or someone dropped off. Oh yeah. yeah. And I was trying to get um, Mike to light it up, but that last this morning I woke up and I went outside and the thing was lying in the fire pit. I was like, "Y'all lit it last night," and Bob was like, "No, I put it. On, I lit it up with some lighter fluid to think it will catch and." Yeah, it just it, went up and it was he, gone. Yeah, he was. It was very anticlimactic. It did not. It. It. I mean, it burned like, like those mesquite branches with the leaves on them. Yeah, it burned up kind of quick. It wasn't big and spectacular at all. They just kind of lit on fire and burned the leaves off. Then it was done. So it was not but, as cool as the last Christmas tree we did. I'll put it. Well, that then, way. well, then the Bob was out there with some more lighter fluid. And um, it was just spraying the tree. I'm like, what do you expect to happen? It just spontaneously <laughs> compares. So I, I went and got some more logs and twigs and things, and I got the fire going. Well, Jake brought a Christmas funny. tree out last winter field day. And when we put that thing in, we saw flames eight or ten feet in the air. It just went. I think he may have soaked it in gasoline for three weeks before he dropped it <laughs> out the police. I don't know, maybe. But that one that Noel brought this time had all kinds of, like, preserving agents or something on it was like painted green or something. I'm like, Oh, that's going to smell wonderful when you burn that. That could be what the allergies are from. Um, so, um, um, right here. Is that it? Last year's. Oh, that's last year's. Yeah. Nice. That that's when we started scrambling and moving everything. <laughs> I was like, let's move back, let's move back. <laughs> that's when you tried burning the radios. I remember that. Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, put a bunch of rednecks in the woods with beer and fire pit and see what happens. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's funny. But I, well. oh, I took that video for Mike because Mike didn't come out that time. So um, I I took the video to Mike and I sent it to him. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's good. But I I, kind of agree with you. Maybe we could tone down the food and and figure something something else out. But on the other hand, man, the food food makes the experience for me even more enjoyable. So it does. It just we we gotta find a way to balance. Right, right. Well, see, and this time it just it it got it got messed up because bob changed his schedule which is not i mean it's it's fine it's not i'm not trying to blame him or anything but no, you no, ended no. up cooking both friday and saturday and next time we'll maybe have designated cooks you know somebody cooks thursday night somebody cooks friday somebody cooks saturday something like that so and um, just i i was let's, let's try to scale it back i make it more simpler unless we can find someone that you know wants to bring a trailer out and just just run that smoker the whole time for us it um that's a possibility that's something i thought about late in the game this year so before next year maybe we'll have enough time to do some good research on that and see what happens mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so but yeah good deal uh, all right that was all i had really i just wanted to talk about winter field day and the noise and the plans for next year and the plans for next field day and the plans for my giveaway streams that that's going to be fun. I'm going to do some. I'm going to give away a DX Commander, and I'm going to give away. Uh, I've got a dual band Yagi that I'm going to give away, and then I'm working on a couple other antennas as well. So we're going to do some antenna giveaways in. Uh, I think it's the third week of February. I think it's the weekend after Hamcation, is when I put that on the calendar. So monthly giveaways for all kinds of good stuff should be fun i think um this go round i do have a monday night ham radio um link all ready to go i'll drop that in the chat okay. um i just put the hashtag monday night ham radio boom uh man we got a big lineup for tomorrow night if i can find the calendar i'll read it off here okay 
No. Why does my calendar want my location? Why does it matter? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, uh, we have a good game joining us again. It's been a while since he's been on. He's starting us off at 515. Then Ham Radio 2.0 coming up at 530, potentially 530. Your time sometimes wiggles around a little bit. Yeah. Um, Ham Radio Dues at 6 o'clock at 611. Take radio. I'm going over a Poda pack. And everything in my Poda Pack update and what's uh, what things are changed and putting it into a new bag. Then uh, Charlie is going to start at 630. And then we have Ham Nuggets um, finishing us off at 7 o'clock. Uh, Ham Nuggets live. And those are always interesting. Everyone's like, fire, Definitely. fire. We love fire. I know. <laughs> yeah. we, man, how much wood did we go through this year? I don't know how much, I don't know what the number was besides just saying all of it. <laughs> so. burned it all. Yeah, we, we burned have, it all. We have a couple of pyros between you and Mike. We're never satisfied with a little fire. You all just kept well, on piling in wood and piling in wood. After the sun went down, we're used to the warm day and it got cold or colder after the sun went down. And that fire felt really good. So <laughs> the more wood you put on it, the better it felt. So it was, uh, it was that was a good time for sure, but yeah, uh, but I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to take the chainsaw back out there and cut some more firewood now. We did go through two pounds, two pounds of beans, and it was almost another. I was about to cook another two pounds last night. Um, it just didn't happen. Um, Shane does say um, tanks beans make things go boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Jason was saying that he forgot uh, scorpion peppers. All right. do, I'm saving them for you. They're uh, the last harvest that we did, and they're in the freezer, so they're still good. I'll bring them out for summer for you, Frank. Yeah. I don't know we'll that do I'll eat a, the beans if you're using those, though. We'll, we'll do a small <laughs> batch, and it'll just be me and you. If you bring them, you got you got to partake. Got you. Just you. No, me, me and you. <laughs> me and you. All right. We can do it. Um, oh, those will be amazing. But this was the biggest batch of beans I've made so far. I've done one pound cans. I've done two of the small cans. But this was the first time I did two pounds of beans in a big pot. You know, half an onion, a uh, couple of um, habaneros. It was amazing. It was amazing. Those beans were really good. Beans were really good. So... Well, good. Okay. Hey, guys, I wanted to make it a short one tonight. Uh, we've had a long weekend, and this was just a wrap-up call, so it wasn't anything like spectacular or anything. Jason and Jeremy, thank you for being on tonight. And uh, Jake, <laughs> he, he dropped off pretty quick. But that, uh, thanks for joining tonight, Jake, as well. He said and his thank phone dropped in the middle of that. Oh, okay. All right, that's fine. He's got an iPhone, so, you know. But Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> I just had to I'm always teasing Jake about his iPhone and if you tease Jake long enough he's like yeah I know it sucks so <laughs> he just he just kind of rolls over I was like well you just won that argument I mean just like because if I can't tease you about it <laughs> so no I'm just kidding but um but it was a fun time had a, had a really great time the um the contacts were the contacts on 20 and 40 were pretty i tell you what man i went up on 20 and i was hunting and pouncing and i made two or three contacts and finally i just i just found a clear frequency i was like you know is this frequency in use i was like okay cq winterfield day cq winterfield day kn5 tr and i did that twice and it was boom pile up and i'm like how did that was a quick response to it to it just 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 now finding a frequency, calling CQ twice, and then all of a sudden I got a pileup, and I worked a pileup for an hour. That was uh, when it started yesterday afternoon, and that was uh, that was fun. That was that, that was fun. I was surprised to, that the pileups came so quickly, but uh, mm -hmm. but they did, mm -hmm. and it was uh, it was good to get everybody in the logbook, and I was happy to see did, uh, all the participation. Did anyone recognize you, Jason? Not that they told me. No, two, two people. Came really? back. One was Tank Radio. That must be you. I was like, yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> the other one was Frank. Is that you? I was like, yeah, man. You you got Frank. Oh, uh, uh, that that was awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, that's cool then. That's cool. Good deal. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say 73 to everybody on the Zoom call, and uh, I'm gonna say a couple quick words. I'm gonna shut it down. So, guys, thanks for participating this year. Uh, we will. 
make a plan to do it in June. And uh, and we're going to make some plans to do some, maybe maybe do some POTUS stuff in between here and there with the new club thing we're talking about. But oh, we're gonna, yes. We're yeah, going to announce yeah. that at a later time, too. So, Which I've Sounds talked like about fun. on here before, kind of kind of a little bit. But uh, thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks for being here, guys. Uh, Y'all have a good evening. All right. Take care. Adios. Cool. All right. Later. So, yeah. All right, Jeremy. Have a good one, man. So that was uh that was fun to um for everybody to in the uh for everybody we talked to, everybody that was there. We had 15 people scheduled to be there and um only 9 showed up. I was thinking 10 Frank earlier, but it was actually 9 people who showed up because really? um uh, I thought yeah, it was 10. It was 9 because it was um who was it? That didn't come by. Oh, Stephen. Stephen didn't show up. He was the sixth one that didn't show up. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that's cool. That's cool. It ended up being nine, and I was saying it was really, well, really fun. Stephen. Stephen and, had um, kids. Had a new yes, baby. Yes. That was delivered. His, that his wife had triplets this weekend, so he kind of had an excuse. What you know? <laughs> triplets? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. She had triplets. Run. So. He should be running towards us and field day. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm like, oh wow. So he might not, it might be a little bit of time before he's able to come do ham radio again. We'll see. I don't know. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> but uh, good deal. Well, thanks a lot, Frank. I'm going to shut it down. We're just going to want to make a short stream tonight. We'll be on for Monday Night Ham Radio tomorrow. And uh, we'll be back for the lunchtime live stream on Wednesday. So that should, in fact, lunchtime live stream Wednesday, maybe we'll talk about what's going on with the weather here. Ooh, so, if we can do it. If, if you we can, can do it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if the power's up. So I got a couple of guests scheduled for lunchtime live streams upcoming. I don't think I have anyone this week, but I do. I'm pretty sure I have someone next week. So, uh, so we're gonna do some guest uh, guest appearances, lunchtime live streams, and then um, and then in a week and a half, we're leaving for Orlando. That's gonna be fun. Really looking forward to Orlando, and um, should be a fun show. So hope to see everybody there who's out there in Florida that weekend. I can't wait to Florida, man. I can't even believe that's like two weeks away. Oh, yeah, we, we we leave in a week and a half. We leave on Wednesday of next week. Jesus, I <laughs> I, I have yet to put stuff in the wash and everything's oh, just yeah. downstairs piled up, and and then we got to do it again. Well, it's less stuff. It's just clothes and cameras. So right, right, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see everyone down there. It's going to be fun. I got stickers. And I might have some QSL cards to pass out if you ask. And we were, um, we got a booth time. We got two time slot at two different booths, right? Just giga parts, I think. Who else? Um, well, didn't the AR double RL have booth? No, that's a that's that's the thing on Thursday. They have a A double RL has a training tracks on Thursday with, along with um. Contest University and a couple other things, some training seminars on Thursday, but the show doesn't officially start till Friday. That's pre-show stuff. So okay, yeah, we okay. got, I we thought got pre show on else Thursday. Was a sign up for slots or something. I don't know. No, I don't think so. Cool. So, yep. Yeah, so 73 all, thanks for joining tonight. And uh we will catch you guys tomorrow night on Monday Night Ham Radio. So have a good weekend. What's left of it? <laughs> <laughs>